the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. What's up and welcome into Locked On Bulls, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. You can follow my co-host Big Dave at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. And you can follow us at Locked On Bulls. Shoot us a text or leave us a voicemail at 331-979-1369. We'll do some mailbag later on in the week. Uh, We got some stuff to talk about today, a little bit of summer league. We'll react to the Bulls' first summer league game, talk about some of the games from Names like Patrick Williams, Marco Simonovic, Io DeSumo, Devon Dotson, and then the latest in the roller coaster story of who the hell is going to end up with one Lowry Marketing and how are we going to get there? We got some more updates from various reporters that we wanted to get to on that. First and foremost, Big Dave, welcome Matthew. to another fresh episode. What, uh, what, what do you want to start with with this Summer League game? What was the biggest thing that, that you Ooh. watched and said that? That's what I want to talk about. You know what? I like this because we're going right into it. Let's just dig right, right in, in there, man. Dive right in, baby. Right in. Get in there. Get in that pool. <laughs> um, first thing I think I'd like to discuss, I think the lead is, you know, Patrick Williams. Um, obviously, he's the one everybody wanted to look at. Everybody wanted to talk about. Everybody had their hopes riding on, kind of. Uh, so they wanted to see how he played. Uh, I'll break this down in, in three in three ways. I'll give you the good, the bad, and why I'm not concerned. <laughs> so the good, obviously you saw the numbers and you saw what he did. The scoring, the rebounding, the facilitating, it was all awesome. Uh, the athleticism. He continued to show what I liked last year about him is I like him without the ball when he's moving baseline to baseline. Uh, we talked about that a lot on Bulls Outcast, how much we liked him on the baseline uh, mm-hmm. when he doesn't have the ball, when he's just getting those offensive rebounds. He kind of showcased that uh, early on in the game. Uh, he had the ball in his hands more. They obviously want to run more pick and roll with him and give him more opportunities, you know, to succeed and create his own shot and do it like that. His his shot, his three-point shot he had on the step back when he crossed the guy Ooh. and stepped back and pulled that in his eye, I jumped out the seat. I did. <laughs> I jumped out. I was like, okay, all right, we're doing stuff. We're working on things. I see. Did not know he had that in his bag. Me, I did not either. I did not either. So it was it was fun to see that. It was one of the things I also liked, Matt, was it was fun to see him actually be vocal. And it was when he pulled that team together, just I believe it was the first or second quarter. I don't remember. But when he just pulled them together in a huddle and just had a quick conversation with them, you know, before they walked back out on the floor, that stuff is what I wanted to see from him. You know, I just we wanted to see him be take control a little more, take that leadership role a little bit more. And so we kind of saw that, you know, when he did that in the game. That was the good, and and it was a lot of good, honestly, because he looked like he was better than everybody on the floor. Let's just be real about that. <laughs> he really did. True. Yeah. Here was the bad about it. Here's what concerned me. It doesn't seem like his dribbling got better. Um, his handles, he he struggled. I, I I watched him turn that over quite a few times. What he had five turnovers, if five I'm not mistaken. Yeah, five turnovers for for Patrick Williams, and a couple of them they just took from him. He they weren't bad passes. They just took it right out of his hands. Uh, his defense, nobody was playing defense, but his defense was was not great uh, on that end of the floor. I don't know if it was summer league or, you know, if the guys just weren't working on that, <laughs> working on that that game or whatever. But it, it, it left much to be desired. Um, his shooting was was not great either. Uh, I believe either six or 20 or something like that. It, it wasn't gr- a great shooting day uh, for Patrick Williams either. Uh, right. So those things gave me kind of pause and. Definitely gave me concern. The ball handling more than anything, more than the shooting. One, because I want to see him take twenty shots. I don't mind him doing all the shooting. That didn't bother me. The defense, like you said, was summer league, but the ball handling—that's what concerned me uh, more than anything. And they just were taking it out of his hands. He didn't really seem to have moves uh, too much, you know. With that, he didn't have a spin move with him. Um, just a lot of bully ball and using, you know, his athleticism, which is great. You know what I mean? It's good to do, but. To not have that dribble down and you be the guy we're running a pick and roll with, that's going to be an issue. 
here's why I'm not concerned. Because Matt and I said a million times on this show, he's about the fourth or fifth option on this starting lineup. So the things that they were asking him to do in summer league, guys, he won't be asked to do when he gets out there in a real game. Okay? So I want guys to kind of pump the brakes on that point. The criticism is fair. I understand that. But worrying about how it translates, I don't think you guys should worry about that yet. Because like we said, he's if we're being real, he's the fifth option. So he'll have time to grow. He's 19 years old. He'll still have time to grow into uh, what we think he can be. But I will say the potential was there. We saw it. We saw the rebounding. We saw the scoring. We saw the skill. But he's got to work on his ball handling and his decision making a little bit better. But as far as going into the season, fifth option. You should you shouldn't be concerned with that. Yeah, I'm not concerned about his ball handling. You know why? He's still 19, and he's going to be the fifth ball handler on the starting lineup. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. and and it's, you're right. Like he didn't have a great defensive game. Nobody did. Like yeah, yeah. ugly defense. I wonder if the, their summer league coach, Damian Cotter, you know, former Windy City Bulls head coach, now uh, an assistant on Donovan's staff, told him, "Hey, Pete, up. We need you to set the tone." offensively and we need you to you to run things offensively and mm. maybe not you know in layman's terms told pat don't worry about defense tonight but what i want you to focus on is seeing just how much you can run this offense for us and it certainly looked like that was his focus especially in the first half he came out he was running the pick and roll he was driving and kicking he was looking to get his own shots in a way that bulls fans have really never seen patrick williams be the first choice offensively Mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. any point in his rookie season uh you know not not even that that frequently it is one collegiate season at florida state uh so i am with you in that yeah okay it was it was some good some bad tale of two halves i'm not concerned about any of it because Mm -hmm. a lot of what we're seeing uh pw asked to do right now in these summer league games is not what he will be asked to do in his second NBA season when he's sharing the floor with Levine, DeRozan, Vooch, Lonzo, um, you know, be a knockdown, you know, off the ball threat in the corners, make cuts, you know, set good screens. And speaking of set good screens, Mm -hmm. this is the other thing that I wanted to highlight with Patrick Williams. And then we'll move on to some other guys. His body looks noticeably different. And it I know, the, like, Bulls fans freak out about it, this stuff all the time. Like, remember a few mm-hmm. years ago when that viral picture of Lowry in his Finland jersey went went all over the place and his, like, his upper Ooh, body, I... his arms, like, he looks like, you know, mm-hmm. an action movie hero. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody was like, oh, my God, look at this great, strong, new Lowry market and transformed <laughs> his body. And then it was like, oh, well, no, he got hurt. And there goes that. <laughs> P-Dub last yes. night, or I guess yesterday afternoon, not only looked leaner, but somehow, like he, his body looked more like a freakish NBA athlete body than his rookie year. It was like, okay, he's got crazy big hands. He's got all mm-hmm. kinds of of you know lateral quickness on the defensive end. You saw his crazy hops with some you know highlight reel blocks and things like mm-hmm. that. But he was doing it in a body that just kind of looked like you know you're like a high school player because he was <laughs> he was like eighteen. Now. I don't know about you, but I saw Patrick Williams' body, and I was like, A, I think he added some muscle and tone to his frame, Mm -hmm. and I think he also grew like an inch and a half. Am am I crazy? I think he grew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you on both counts, man. It it does feel like he got a rule up about an inch, and if he came in with his shoulders like this, like up on his ears a little bit, and I was like, oh, well, he's been doing stuff, and when they said he had only taken, he said he had only taken what seven days off, and then has been in the gym every day since. Like, it, you know, it's funny. It, it reminded me of this movie Central Intelligence. I don't know if you ever seen it with The Rock and Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart, in in the movie, The Rock was this big, you know, overweight kid in high school. And then when Kevin Hart saw him like twenty years later, he was The Rock, and he was like, "Dude, how did you do it?" He was like, "Y'all, come on, give me your secret." He said, "Well, I worked out every day for twenty years straight." for six hours a day he was, he was like i mean anybody could do it right <laughs> and that's what i thought of when i saw he dub come out here like this like that's what yeah. i kind of had in my head like he's been working out every day like in the gym getting his body and getting everything together so yes i agree with you on that matt and also i i loved his leadership because i loved how he talked at halftime i, I just loved it 
the infl- the inflection of his voice and how he spoke and the tone that he spoke with. He spoke like it was his team and it was wanted to win. I, I just liked that part of him. So the mental growth also I liked on him as much as I did like the physical growth. And you're right. The magical weight gain is something people go crazy over. I used to be a part of that. Uh, yeah. because when Larry Markinen showed up, I was calling him the white Carl Malone. When he showed up, it was swole up like this, and then it was nothing. But we Dub and I call it the magical weight gain on ball on bulls. You know, Carlos Boozer did it. You know, everybody does it. I'm buying the bulls gets magical weight gain. So yeah, I, I'm with you. You're right. Well, uh, we'll see what, what he does in the remaining summer league games, but I thought overall encouraged by what P Dub looks like and all of the things he was trying to do because this is his opportunity to work on his game in competitive five on five where maybe he has the upper hand in some ways and gives him confidence to try things that he wouldn't necessarily try Mm -hmm. when as we've said he'll be probably the fifth option most often at least in the starting unit this upcoming season uh more thoughts from summer league in just a minute first though i want to tell you all about our friends at headspace wouldn't it be great if there were a pocket-sized guide that helped you sleep and focus and act and be better? Well, there is. And if you have just 10 minutes, Headspace can change your life. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace really can help you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, Headspace has a three-minute SOS meditation for you. Maybe you need help falling asleep. Headspace has wind-down sessions that their members swear by. And for Mm. parents, Headspace even has morning meditations that you can do with your kids to get your family started out on the right foot each and every day. Headspace's approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. It's also backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. I'm one of those 60 million, and I use Headspace every day. It's great. It makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule, anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. You deserve to feel happier, don't you? And Headspace is meditation made simple. So go to headspace.com slash locked on NBA. That's head, headspace.com slash locked on NBA for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. So head to headspace.com slash locked on NBA today. Wow. I feel so calm now. Like this. <laughs> I feel so serene. That was awesome. It's isn't it funny to just you know talk hear me talk about meditation and finding <laughs> peace, inner peace in your life. For but real, I, so I, well. I, I use that app, but it really does help. And it's, it's especially, good. That's especially good. during the Garpax years. <laughs> headspace, headspace, help! Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're important, headspace. We needed you, and you helped Matt Peck, and that's saying a lot. That's the endorsement right there. You helped Matt Peck, all right? Mm. That's the endorsement. Hey, you know what else helps me is Built Bar, Dave. Mm. You know what else I like to do, Matt? I like to get in my head space, and then when I wake, come out from my head space, I want me a snack. And guess what? Built Bar says, I got snacks for you. Now, did you know Built Bar has a lot of delicious, delicious flavors? So maybe you don't even know what flavor you want. You're looking around, and maybe you're like me to try and decide what you like. And you look, and you see all these amazing flavors that they have. Coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream. They even threw out the German chocolate on your face mm. just so you can get down with it. Man, if you haven't tried all the flavors and you want to try more, you get yourself a mixed box where you can get two of each of the nine flavors. And you say to yourself, well, man, this sounds delicious. This sounds amazing. I get all these choices. Well, obviously, it's going to go to my thighs. It's going to go to my hips. I can't eat these things, right? Wrong. Wrong. They're healthy, too. 17 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 4 grams of net carbs, ladies and gentlemen. You heard what I said? I said 4 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors. All of them tasty. All of them healthy. Order today. 
get the grasshopper cookie or the raspberry, however you want to feel. Do that. And you know why I know it's good? Because it's the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. That's right. The gold medal winning U.S. track and field team. Don't you want to do that? Ain't that the coolest? I think so. Why don't you head on over to Built.com. Use that promo code Locked On. We're going to give you 15% off just for coming through and trying this, man. So be like the U.S. track and field team and get you something in your life called Built Bar. It's delicious. Mm. You want I, it? I'm in the mood for a Built Bar right now. You want it? Um, so, okay, Big Dave, let's move to Marco Simotovic, the second round draft pick from the Bulls last year, the front office's first draft selection upon taking this job. Um, and uh, they were pretty clear with we're going to we're going to draft the stash for a year bulls fans were you know catching some of his games for mega over uh you know in that in that european league and then this this a lot of bulls fans excited hey this is our first real up close and personal look at marco simonovich what can he do and how quickly can he do it mm-hmm. assuming lowry marketing has gone and we'll get to that at the back end of the show can he come in and replace lowry's production like can mm-hmm. he be a a, a 15 points per game score or at least a double digit points per game score playing off the bench, uh, you know, because clearly there's no room for him in this starting lineup. Uh, he's still young. Like he's not even 22 years old yet. He'll turn 22 in the fall. I thought I saw some good and some expectedly bad for Marco in their first summer league. Um, I, I liked how active he was on the glass. I thought for a guy as slender as he is with his length he, he and, and tenacity, he he attacks the glass, which which mm-hmm. clearly Bulls fans are worried about the depth of this front court on this roster for next season. So I was glad to see that. He also looks pretty swift in transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there were a couple of really nice buckets he had in transition where I was like, that dude can run the floor and and handle the ball in transition fairly well for a dude his size. Mm-hmm. And my brain was like, oh right, like that's kind of like what Lowry we thought he could be. Well, let's pump the brakes on those comparisons and just say, okay. Marco looks like a project, but he looks like someone who was like the stats from playing professionally this past year overseas. The the eye test backs up that he certainly has NBA potential. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, Like I said, Matt, I, he was the one I was watching from the moment he stepped on the floor. I had all eyes on him. And what I liked is he looked exactly like the video I had been watching of him from overseas. I didn't see anything different, any shift. I didn't see any change in the mindset of how he played, of the approach that he took. He did the same exact things that he was doing. Very high motor. Uh, He's actually bigger than what I thought. He's definitely slender, Mm -hmm. no question, but he's a little bigger than what I thought he was. Um, But I love the motor on him. That's what impressed me the most. There was a play where the Bears, there was a scramble for a loose ball on on the other end of the floor uh, when the Pelicans missed the shot. He was right in the middle of the scrum, and when the ball came out to the guard, he was gone down the floor, and he ended up getting the layup. He outran the entire Pelicans team down the floor to get an easy layup. I watched that play at least six times because that was like, okay, that's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to know about you. The effort, the energy, how bad do you want it? Where's your basketball IQ? Uh, his IQ is pretty solid. Uh, he knows where to be. He was. He never seemed like he was out of position. He never seemed like he was lost on the floor. He even you know, gave you a nice little move inside. And most of his points, except for like an outside you know, jump shot, came, came inside. Mm-hmm. And that was the other thing that impressed me. Like you said, Matt, like his interior offense, I was like, cool, I like this. You know, he's not scared. You know, he's in there actually bumping around. He was taking bumps and he was yeah, getting that, to the that free one transition line. bucket he had where he initiated contact of the defender who was kind of back on his heels yes. and confidently just used that creating contact to then steady himself and had this nice little like, you know, leaning bank shot. And I was like, oh, yes. that, like he, he's slender and he's not afraid of contact. I think he's still mm-hmm. going to get bullied on the defensive end at times. <laughs> For sure. Oh, I was getting but- there. <laughs> On the offensive end, I think we could be excited to see to see him do some stuff. Oh, no question about it. Um, you know, I love guys who are tall who like being tall and recognize that they're tall. And he recognizes that, especially on the offensive end, 
that I'm tall and I and I have a high motor. And that's what he plays with. And that's what was very impressive. And like and like I said, Matt, like he he was getting to the foul line. Like he was getting calls and getting to the foul line. That's big. Like I don't think people realize how big that is because nobody was getting to the foul line for the Chicago Bulls at any position that they had, whether it was Zach getting calls or whether guys just didn't do it. Nobody was really getting to the foul line. So now we have DeRozan and now we have this, this guy who, you know, looks like he can get to the foul line. That's good. On the defense side of the ball, ugh. (laughs) That's where the struggle was at. Yuck. He was getting scored upon (laughs) when he was out there, man. And and some of it was it honestly I don't want to say it was from lack of effort because I don't think it was he was definitely trying to block those shots and he was trying but I mean he was just overmatched especially and and the cherry on top was watching him get dunked on uh, by one oh. of their players man Ooh, oh. and it was it was oh. vicious and you will be seeing that again <laughs> because that, that was mean that facial was rough well, you know well welcome to summer league NBA Marco. Uh, yeah. But credit to him, he's 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 out. He was out there trying to block. Trying. He was he yeah. was failing. Most yes. NBA players these days are like, oh no, I I can't have that. Like it'll hurt right. my brand. I'm just gonna give right. this guy a dunk <laughs> and get out of the way. Yes, Marco no, is like this 21 year old Euro kid being like, oh, I'll try and block it. I'm, sure, I'm not gonna succeed, but I'll try right. and block it. But I, I felt the same way. The uh, the thing that I'm really looking forward to with him, and, and you kind of touched on it, is what he might be able to do in transition. Like mm-hmm. we we hope that his his uh, respectable three point shooting from from Liga can uh, translate. If, if he can become a you know a six eleven guy who is at least a 36 percent threat behind the three point line, that's great. But mm-hmm. with his size and his sprite and those long ass legs of his getting out in transition and he said it after the game he said my goal is to run fast to be faster than the other bigs to run better than them um so I'm so talking about it's it's That's an interesting point. it's an interesting dichotomy between the premier big on this team who is an all-star center in Nico um that does not run fast and does yeah. not play fast you right. saw it when the Bulls brought him in for, uh, in the trade midway through last season. Billy Donovan changed everything offensively. The Bulls went from a play fast team to a team that slowed things down pretty substantially and played through Nico in the post. So that's what I'm curious to see with Marco is if he can get a spot in the back end of this rotation and play some significant bench minutes, how Billy Donovan picks and chooses who plays with him on the court to try and utilize that strength of his while maybe – with DeRozan in his mid-range game, with Vooch in his post game, like, yeah, Lonzo and Levine will try and get their opportunities in transition and try and play fast at times, but that starting unit with Vooch and DeRozan is not going to be some running up and down the court kind of group. <laughs> yeah. When can Marco use that speed and athleticism of his to maybe play a little bit faster in a second unit that might also include Kobe White? Ooh, you just you just put something in my head when you said that. Lonzo Ball and Marco. If Lonzo's in there with Marco and they're running that in transition, he's going to get it easy at least six points that way just by mm-hmm. running the floor because Lonzo will find you if you're running the floor. And so if you're showing yourself that, and again, that overseas play probably lends itself to um, the point guard play and why it's so important. Because if a big man is running, that's a rule. That's been a rule since I've been watching basketball. If a big man is running, you reward the big fella. That's right. how it goes. So if the big fella's running like that, like I said, that play, Matt, I mean, I, f- I wanted to do a Hubie Brown breakdown of that play. <laughs> like when I saw it, man, I wanted to put that on Twitter for real and just do a breakdown. Like, do y'all see this? Like he was here and then he was here. Like, like he was, yeah. it was, it, and it was so like, yeah, like this is what I want. So no, if he's in there with Lonzo and guys like that, Matt, He's going to get an easy six points just by running the floor. That's it. He'll get an easy six um, on that. With Kobe White, that would be interesting because Kobe is not known. I don't know Kobe for that. You know what I mean? I don't know him to find a big man while he's running. But Kobe is a good in transition. You know, Mm -hmm. Kobe is not bad in transition. He's very good in transition. So it's going to be interesting watching him with those younger guys like, like Kobe and Lonzo who like to get up and down the floor. So, and definitely Lonzo loves to find the guys. We'll see if Kobe becomes one of those guys 
you know, who can see that the seven foot tall dude is running his butt off and can just right. get him an easy bucket. And, and you know, we we did see Kobe with some noticeable improvement there when we yeah. got Vooch. And, and and Kobe was like, Oh, I can't like Kobe's he improved his entry passes a little bit, in my opinion, but also had a much easier target to get those entry passes to. Because mm. Vooch is like, oh, yeah, just, just give me the ball. I got position, you know, down low post. I'm, you know, I got position on my guy. Little mini hook shot. Boom, two points. Whereas right. Kobe was trying to do that with Wendell, who couldn't catch a basketball. And then Lowry, who is like, oh, yeah, I have a mismatch. I'm Lowry Marketing. I'm seven feet tall. I got a six foot five guy on me, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Right. <laughs> The accuracy, the accuracy. <laughs> it's so accurate. Oh my God. You just took me back to the green room. I'm screaming at the screen when that happened. My God. That's so accurate. Oh my God. Oh uh, goodness. Sp- speaking of that, man, we have to talk about what exactly is going on with the latest with Lowry Markin and, and his saga. Before we do that, though, a quick shout out to our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.ag. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing, and you could track all of that action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs. Major League Baseball, we've got NFL preseason games right around the corner. You could bet on those. We're only a couple of weeks away from NFL regular season kickoff. You could bet on all of that. Let's bet on who the Bears are going to beat. I don't know if they're going to beat the Rams in week one, but you can put some money on it if you want to. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online. On your laptop or mobile device, and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. This is your chance to get into the game and start making money watching the teams that you love. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on that first deposit when you use promo code LOCKED ON. So go to betonline.ag, set up an account, put 100 bucks in that account, and betonline is going to give you an extra $50 to play with. But again, you got to use promo code locked on when you sign up for that account. Mm-hmm. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Uh, Big Dave, if you were going to put money on where Lowry Marketing is at the beginning of the 21 22 season, do you, do you have a front runner right now? Do we think it's the Dallas Mavericks? I've been saying it's the Dallas Mavericks for a while. <laughs> like you, if you want to go back and look at like Outcast episode, you just hear me telling John he's gonna be a Mav, John. And you know, John doesn't believe anything. Like, like as a Mav fan, nothing, nothing good is ever going to happen ever to the Mavs ever. Even though they got Dirk Nowitzki and a championship. Yeah, quick, quick shout out to him. He just got his boy Lucas signed to a two hundred and seven million yes. dollar extension. Big shout out after they went to his home <laughs> to sign this man. They not playing. <laughs> they not playing, and deservedly so. Honestly, if they had three hundred million, they would have gave him three hundred million, and he right. deserves it every bit of it. He he's awesome. He the future face of the league. Honestly, um, but yeah, I've been saying it for a while that it's it's the Mavs. Like I just it just feels like that's where he's going to be. It just feels like he's going to be a Mav. So, so the news coming out that I'm seeing, man, it, it's kind of lending itself to that, Matt. So basically where we are now is that the market has completely dried up. Um, and not just for Lowry, but there aren't really any teams with money left to spend in the range of the kind of money that Lowry marketing is reportedly looking for. He's looking for mm-hmm. at least 15 million annually. And, there are a handful of teams who are reportedly interested who could hypothetically make that happen, but they would have to do it in a sign and trade. And it would n- not only be a sign and trade with the Bulls, but likely a sign and trade that would require a third party team to help facilitate by taking on some of Dallas's contract on the books to free up money for Lowry, whether it be Dallas or whatever team is interested. So, this is uh, an interesting report from Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report that came out um, Tuesday morning. And I want to just read you a couple excerpts from it because it gives you a good idea of what exactly the situation is with Lowry right now. Okay. From Jake Fisher's report. Each team that has inquired about marketing would have to now add him via sign and trade as cap space has dwindled across the league. Dallas, Pelicans, Boston, T-Wolves have all shown interest in signing marketing to deals worth around $15 million in average annual uh, value but the Bulls are seeking a first-round pick in exchange for helping facilitate the transaction. 
Additionally, Chicago Brass are requiring Mark and his new team to find a third trade partner to take on that outgoing salary needed to create cap space for Markkanen's contract. For a third team to take on unwanted salary, this hypothetical front office would also ask for draft pick compensation. So any team that wants to add Lowry now would have to send a first-round pick to the Bulls and likely another first or two second-round picks elsewhere. It's a clear roadblock that the Bulls seem to have intentionally created. Chicago is playing this masterfully from no other perspective than a contract management standpoint, quote, said one team capologist, quote, it won't do any favors relationship wise, but they're bleeding his market based on their tax situation and nobody else can offer him any kind of money without them and quote them being the bulls. So that basically tells me one thing and one simple thing, big Dave. The Chicago Bulls' new front office of Arturis and Eversley are not necessarily worried right now about hurting Lowry's feelings. Business is business. And (laughs) if you didn't get the market value you thought you were worth and now everything's dried up and you're standing here alone wondering where the hell you're going to play, and also you have made it clear to at least the media and probably also to the Bulls behind closed doors that you don't want to be here on a qualifying offer, Mm-hmm. We're going to wait this out and see what team desperate to add some front court depth is actually willing to play ball and give us something for you. And I'm, if, if, you, if you have to wait around for a while to figure out where the team that is, sorry, not sorry. The Bulls front office is not going to just help some team get mm-hmm. Lowry without getting something for him. And that's where we are right now. That put a smile on my face. And I'll tell you why. Because it is shrewd and it is business. When have when's the last time for this front office have you had the, heard the sentence Chicago is playing this masterfully? When is the last time you heard that? I had I had to reread that line like eight <laughs> times. <laughs> what? The joy it brought to my face when I read that article when you sent it to me, and I read that. I said, yes. Like you said, Matt, they're not concerned about his feelings. This ain't got nothing to do with feelings. This is business. And we are trying to get something, especially with the tampering situation going on. We need Mm -hmm. to acquire assets. And they understand that. So they're trying to get as much as they can. And they know, and their team, they were like, well, this hypothetical third team that would come in. You know, they would have to be basically he was saying they would have to be desperate enough, you know, to do something like this. Mm-hmm. Enter the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> Guess who's desperate to find their two hundred million dollar guy some help? Because mm-hmm. the guy that they got to help him ain't cutting it. Guess who's desperate to find that? And an international player on top of that. And one who's young. Guess it's Mark Cuban. You know Mark Cuban's about that shrewd life. He's about mm-hmm. doing that, doing those moves. That's what he likes doing, making those splashes. You know, see, we're trying, we're doing stuff. Luca, is this is this what you want? You like this? Uh, do you want me to you know put the put the napkin across your lap? You know, you want me to cut your meat for you? They'll do right. anything that they need for this man to succeed. So they're in that position of a team that's I wouldn't say they're super desperate, but they are a little desperate after signing this because they want to give Luca something to show, and- like, hey, we're trying. Right. And if I understood this, and then Mark Stein also had some interesting um, elements added to this whole perspective, especially from Dallas's side. The only thing they can really offer Lowry right now, as far as their books go, is the is the TPE, the tax player exception right. contract, exactly. which is not even equal to or would not be even equal to the nine million and change that he could get just playing on the qualifying offer from the Bulls. Correct. But it sounds like the Bulls and Lowry are very much ready for for a mutual divorce. So if Dallas wants Lowry and wants him on a multi-year sign and trade, they have to do something. Like yes. you said, they they got we, also like the other huge variable in this is like, what the heck does Luca think about Kristaps? Remember, like mm. at the end of Dallas's playoff run, there was that report that like Kristaps is grumpy because he thinks that Luca is like, you know, the the favorite son who gets all the love and adoration from the organization and from the Dallas Mavericks. And everybody was like, well, yeah, that's because he's a superstar (laughs) phenom and you're wildly underperforming your contract. (laughs) So the Kristaps Lowry thing, here we are again with Kristaps and Lowry, right? It was like Lowry's rookie year. 
Mm-hmm. Christophs is still a Nick. We're at the yep. Garden. Lowry yep. has this amazing coming out party game, and everybody's like, Lowry's the next Christophs. Yes. Fast forward four years, and boom, here we are today. And we're like, yeah, Luca needs more help. Would Lowry be better than Christophs? <laughs> You just add Lowry on top of Chris Dops. But I mean, may- maybe oh, like w- maybe the Pelicans are desperate because they have had an awful offseason, Dave. I mean, like, d- like Dallas getting Luca to sign on that dotted line right there. There's your offseason. A plus. You yeah, signed yeah. the best signed player it. under right. 23 years of age in the league and one of the best top five players in the league, regardless of age, to a right. max extension. Fact. There's your off season. Maybe you can add Lowry. The Pelicans basically lost Lonzo for nothing. No mm. offense to Sato and Temple, who who we love, but you lost Lonzo for nothing. And mm-hmm. you're sitting here with Zion Williamson, your franchise, and Zion's probably looking around saying like, <laughs> what, the what, the, "What the hell are we doing? <laughs> what, what the hell are we doing?" Yeah, and so I, you know, I don't know if Lowry helps the Pels that much. You know, mm-hmm. gives you another, you know, a perimeter threat alongside the, the scoring duo of Zion and Ingram. But did they really love Lowry that much? Do they love Lowry that much? Because it didn't seem like they wanted him when the Bulls were pitching him at the trade deadline. Correct. That is the point right there. That is an excellent point, Matt. You didn't show that interest then because when they offered him, you wanted more. And now you're like, we'll take whatever you got. Like, no, like why? Why? Why the sudden change here? What is flipped? Maybe Gar Form is now involved. Back to the conspiracies. <laughs> Back to the conspiracies. I know it was you, Gar. I know it was you. I know it was you. Um, but yeah, but it just it feels like the fit is gonna happen in Dallas. I don't know, but these two teams are now involved. I know Mark Stein uh was reporting some things, uh basically saying that even if it does happen, um their biggest trade exception tops out at roughly 11 million per season for four years. That's what Mark Stein is reporting. That's okay. wildly under what Larry was really trying to get, man. That's yeah. uh, that's even under the 15 million that they reported that he would probably be getting. So yeah. it's under what he thought. It's under what experts thought. You know what I mean? So that's super low what he's got happening right here, man. But again, we saw what happened with Dennis Schroeder, man. I was going like, to say, it's, it's a shade above the embarrassing situation that Schroeder's in right now. Where Did, did you send that uh, text to our, our thread with, uh, you know, me, you, John, and Bulldog about how I did. there was a report like, oh, the Celtics offered him one year for $5 yeah. million or something? 5.9. <laughs> Couldn't even give him uh, six. <laughs> like 5.9. Uh, that's we'll give you and five that's five a dude who turned down 84 last offseason. 84. To be with the Lakers. <laughs> 84. Four million to go Ooh. from that to five point nine for one year. I mean, he. I feel bad for him, bro. Like he got some terrible advice. Honestly, he got some really bad advice, man. But I think you could honestly say that Dennis Schroeder and Lowry Markkinen, as it stands right now, are the two players whose agents wildly misrepresented their market value to mm. their clients, mm. and, and like, I I don't know what how that conversation works. You know, I'm not, I'm not a sports agent. I don't know how you go to your client. If you're Lowry marketing's agent and say, listen, buddy, I know you're looking for, you know, 20 mil annually, or at least somewhere high, close to 20 in the 15 to 20 range on a long-term deal in a place where you're pretty confident that you're going to be a starter. But, but that's not realistic. It's not. That's not, not realistic. So I don't know if it's Lowry or his agent who's the one who's like wildly like miscalculating things right now to lead mm-hmm. us to this point where he is sitting out in the cold while he's actually sitting out in a disgusting heat wave and, <laughs> and saying, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know, I don't want to go back to Chicago. I'm done with right. that. I done. don't want to play on a qualifying offer. But there, there is no money. There is no yeah. money. What you want to do, man? Because you, it's it's such a wild position, and I love the the fact that the Bulls are exploiting that position. They understand the position you're in, and they're not going to do you no favors right now. You didn't do them no favors with your play, so they're not about to do you no favors. Okay, so that's how that works, man. And also, you ain't doing no favors coming out talking crazy either. You know, in the newspaper, you think they ain't hear that too? They're right. not about to do no favors for you, dog. They. They're going to take care of themselves right about now, which honestly is the right business move. And that's yeah. why I love it so 
so much for this team. I mean, it's it is it is refreshing to have a front office who's looking at this purely from a business standpoint and and doing mm-hmm. it intelligently. Yes, not just like you know, not not because the comparison isn't oh the old Bulls front office was too much about like loyalty and not right. hurting people's feelings compared to this new one. No, like they clearly had no problem hurting people's feelings. <laughs> zero, zero. Ask Bobby Portis, ask Jabari zero. Parker, ask Jimmy zero. Butler, ask anybody. But it's the fact that, hey, <laughs> we're looking at this from a frame of it's business, not personal, and mm-hmm. we're handling our business in the best way we see possible. They're right. just better at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I I think back to, this is the last thing, and then we'll get out of here. I don't know about you, Big Dave, but it makes me think of, it was a Bulls game towards the end of the regular season, and it was a rare win. Zach and Vooch both had pretty big games. And they're coming off the court. They're walking into the tunnel. And Arturis is there in the tunnel. And he's giving yes. Bulls players high fives and pounds and pats on the back. And the Bulls official Twitter account shared this video, right? And I think they did it on Instagram, too. And the tail end of the video is Lowry bringing up the caboose of that group of players walking down the tunnel. And AK just blanks him. Yes. I mean, blanks him. Yes. And yes. you, me, and John were on Outcast talking about it like, oh, I, I we're, we're not reading tea leaves here. I think AK is done with Lowry Markin. And I mean, he clearly saw this dude. It's not like it was Ryan Archie Diacono, who he also gave a fist bump to. It, it's a seven foot tall finished guy. Who's bringing up the rear? You know what I mean? Like, like Matt said, bringing up the caboose. Oh my God. And then just saw him, he, and he gave two to, I think, to Sato and Vooch, and then was like, and we're done here. You know, it turned around. I was like, wow. I didn't want to read into that, but seeing everything that's happening now, yeah, it, it, it lends credence to it, man. Like, it, it was something. It was something. You know, L- Lowry was certainly in a prove it year this yeah. past season. Got to impress a new front office. Got to prove that you're worth a contract extension in in the realm that you and your representatives are looking for. He didn't do it. I mean, flat out, he didn't do it. He lost his starting job to Daniel Tice. (laughs) Enough said. Yeah. Um, So we will continue to monitor this situation. Look, I don't necessarily think that something is going to happen in the coming hours, even days. It Mm. might take a while. For this mm-hmm. to settle, Goran Dragic is going through something similar right now where yes. he's in limbo, you know, uh, got sent away from Miami in, in, a, in the Kyle Lowry deal, has said, like, I don't mm-hmm. really want to play in Toronto. So he's he's kind of floating. Mm-hmm. Lowry is floating. It might be a minute. And, like, you know, there there isn't some kind of, like, we're not in crunch time. There is no deadline other than when the season starts. So the Bulls, by all of these reports, are going to take their time and get the best possible result of this Lowry situation that they can, and they're in no hurry. Because right. they're not the ones like Lowry saying, how do I get paid? They're just nope. the ones saying, all right, whatever team out there wants Lowry, come talk to us and give us your best pitch. That's it. Simple. And I'm, I'm more than content to let them do that and to wait it out and see how it goes. I love uh, it. And, I love you know, it. Hopefully in the meantime, we get an NBA investigation report <laughs> analysis that comes back clean. <sighs> but everybody, everybody's tampering. Everybody's <laughs> tampering. Speaking of Tice, there was something else that, that Stein had today. It was like, yeah, we, we call it the first day of free agency. It's actually the last day of free agency because mm. he got word of the Daniel Tice rocket sign and trade on draft day, which was mm. four full days before free agency started. Wow. So wow. the Bulls are not the only guilty party. They are one of 30 guilty parties. So why are we doing this, huh? Son of a bee sting. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things to say. <laughs> I love saying that. Damn it, Matt is in my head. <laughs> All the time. My God. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, we'll uh we'll leave it there. Thanks to our sponsors for today's show. We got Headspace, Built Bar, and Bet Online. Put your mind at ease with Headspace. Put your body in the right place frame with built bar and then gamble on some sports with bet online boom 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 there's three great boom, sponsors boom, boom. for you right there follow wow. us on twitter i'm at bulls underscore peck he is at bow b-a-w-l sports bow. we are at locked on bulls you can also shoot us a text or a voicemail 331-979-1369 also quick shout out big dave 
enjoyed y'all's Bow Law Bulls episode with our friend Lakina. Uh, yes. If you guys haven't listened to that, go check it out. Great chat, great convo about Bulls and all things. Um, yes. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Thank you. Appreciate so, that. Thank you. Listen to that after you listen to this and then come back and find our episode for tomorrow. And yeah, we'll be We got more. We we'll got more. Here. Come on we by. Here. Here. Big Dave, I'm Matt. Thanks for listening to Bulls Nation. See you, Red. Be good. Peace out.